Hi, my name is David from Electric Teaching, and this is part six of my Star Catcher game. Uh, as you can see, we have a target bouncing around. That's a star image, and I have a little spaceship here. That's my player, and my player can move around. And um, by the keys, uh, uh, the keys on the keyboard, right and left arrow, up and down arrow. Later, we're going to move the move the player around with the mouse and give that option. And we are going to have as many targets as the, you desire and maybe use it through the levels. So far, quick little review. We are going, uh, we have a folder back here with the star image, the spaceship image, the background image, and then the Pi document, the Pi game document. I'm using 2.26 uh, right over here, uh, Python, and I've already downloaded um, Pi game dot. Uh, Pygame from Pygame.org. A quick little review of how, what you saw there. It is a window and height of 600 by 400 pixels. I am displaying it in a main routine after importing Pygame system in random and initiating a Pygame uh, library there. Uh, this function here, game, is my main routine. It loads the background, loads the target, loads the player, uh, sets a speed at random intervals for the uh, target. Um, and this is the main loop where everything... Oops, got some old text there. Don't need that there. And this is the main loop where everything uh, runs. It's a, a true statement that continually runs forever and ever until you click on something. So you click on the quit, which is the red box with the white X up here. This displays uh, our background player and target. And down here, if the target gets too far off the screen, it bounces back with a negative of the speed input. So it basically is adding negative of the speeds, uh, which means it reverses the direction. And this is the main way that Python runs a, uh, their main routine, and I'm calling it the game there. Today we're going to do clock animation. We're going to do clock animation. Um, I'm going to first have to change the way our target position is loaded. Before, we were using a, a get rect of the icon, and now I actually want to set it into an XY uh, little array here. Uh, target position 20 by 20 uh, little uh, is the XY location that it will start. Now, I'm doing this because down the road, we're not going to move it like we were with this move IP command um, based on the speed. What we're going to do is we're going to move that with XY commands based on um, incrementing it that way. So let's see. I need to go down here, and we're going to add some clock mechanisms. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add move some variables around here. I'm going to create a uh, little comment line that says uh, speed of game and other variables initiated. And now let's see. Okay, I'm going to be doing a clock command here. I'm going to make a new variable called clock. It's going to equal a pi game library time command dot clock open uh, with a capital uh, C on the clock with an open and close parenthesis to call up that function. Now what I'm doing is I'm loading up the variable clock uh, right at the beginning of the game, so it, it gets a time marker, basically. Um, we're going to make the game speed. We're going to make the game speed equal to 100 for the moment. This is where we can change the game speed to anything we want. And it's a simple number right here that we have to change and nothing else. We're going to change the speed down here to be a multiple of the game speed. This means it's random one, two, th one, two or 3. Uh, that does include the endpoints, this random integer. And so that will be 100, 200, or 300. And down here, the same thing. Game speed 
and we're going to make it random one two one two three four five so 100 to 500 and now this target position move we're going to remove and we are now going to say um, create a seconds variable it's going to use the clock command and this is going to load up and give us a tick now a tick is all is milliseconds uh, i'd like to show you what that looks like over here in the shell if i can scroll down and get the shell up here i've been already doing a lot of programming today and so i've got a lot of little red air marks let's see i want to just show you what this looks like so let me actually get some down here a little bit here okay and i'm going to import target pi game i'm going to import pi game i'm going to do the same command that i did over here so clock equal pi game dot time dot clock i know you can't see that so i'm going to bring that over and capital c And now I'm going to show you what the tick looks like. So I'm going to do clock dot tick. Okay, and that's the milliseconds since the clock went up. If I come back up here and click on the Pi game uh, command line, hit return, it appears in my next line, hit return. That's the milliseconds since the last time. I'm going to do that again and again. You can see it's milliseconds since the time in between. If I do the same exact line and divide by a thousand dot zero to make sure it's floating, then it'll tell me the seconds in between each tick. And so that was five seconds in between. So I can get a feel for that, how that works. Now I'm going to come over here. And so this game goes real fast. The computer goes real fast. So the seconds in between each loop. Is about 0 0.01, 0 0.02 the last times I was checking it on my computer. But if we move the target position now based on, I'm going to move the x coordinate first, which is the uh, uh, first entry, so the zero entry as it's done in Python's arrays. So the target position will be incremented by the seconds times the speed which is in hundreds so when you multiply this 0 0.01 time to the hundreds moves it over um, moves it over uh, uh, pixels a few pixels at a time but basically it is based on sorry just trying to get my bracket number here correct had to do not doing a good job there sorry about that so I had to do the speed at zero. So that was the, the zero, the first entry in speed, plus to make it increment with the target positions, x coordinate, which is the first entry. Do the same thing here for the y, which is in the first entry, plus equals seconds times speed first. Excuse me, did the same thing again. So now it's grabbing the second entry in the array, which is the element one. And now it's when it blitz the target position, it will be incremented based on time. Hopefully that will make everything work and let's give it a try. It asked me to save and try to run and it's not working. Okay, let's take a look. Well, I found that mistake, and I forgot to divide this by a thousand. And we're going to divide it by a thousand point zero, which is a floating number. Then, which will make seconds a floating number, and then therefore have a rational expression or a decimal uh, part of the answer as well. Um, I also just want to double check to make sure that uh, I reminded you, and I don't know if I have in the previous one. We need to uh, make sure it bounces off the screen cleanly, off the edges of the screen cleanly. And so what I do is I give it a boost immediately if we uh, find ourselves next to the screen or beyond uh, the, the width and height and zero marks. Um, 
with this uh, then is it quickly gets it out of that range and then continuing on flowing nicely. So let's save, control S, F5, and run, and you can see it is running nicely, um, bouncing off the screens. It's not going fast enough right now, so what I want to do is change the 100 to 200 and save it. And that's the game speed there. And it should play twice as fast. Remember, it is based on a random number, so I easily could have got a random fast speed as well. So let me just stop it and run it again to show you that it just kind of goes at a random number of speed. But this is definitely playing faster, twice as fast with the randoms built in. And the most important part about this is that the game is going based on seconds and not by how fast your computer is. So if you do a bunch of things in the background this, uh, and slows down the computer processor, this is still moving based on seconds. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Part 7, we'll be doing collisions. And down the road, we'll be having mini stars and uh, collecting a lot of different, uh, collecting them and moving through several different levels. Thank you.